mean the snapper when you go live? I know. Uh, was that the snapper? We're live. Hey! <laughs> so this morning we're talking about your property value and it must go through people's mind like, you know, it's the biggest asset class in the country and it must go through people's mind all the time. I wonder where we are. I wonder where we are, particularly in a changing market. We're going to teach you how to be more of a pro with your price. Mr. Good Berger. morning, everyone. Welcome to Morning Minutes. Myself, Michael Bergio, Mark Novak, episode 441, coming up with your sale price. One, how do agents do it? And two, how you how can you at home work out what your property is worth? Because we find out a lot of time, Mark, owners just want to know what their property is worth as a bit of a health check, not necessarily going to market and they've sometimes had, I don't know, well, it's like contacting anyone in a sales job. As soon as you sort of contact them, you're worried that you're going to get bombarded with phone calls. Are you going to sell? I've got a buyer. When really you just want to know what your property is worth. And, you know, you don't want to sell. Most of the time, 90% of the time, you just want to know, you just want to put your finger in there and have a pro tell you what your asset's worth. And, how do you do that? Yeah. Good morning, Luke. Luke said, bye, bye, bye. Snapper. Yeah, I had the snapper. Um, is this a buyer's agent's question? So I think uh, this topic's more is going to be steered to yeah, your mum and dad sitting at home and they sort of want to work out what the property is worth without really calling anyone, an agent, without calling in a valuer um, and what is the psychology and how do agents do it? So Mark, what's the first step? Let's say you got a block, a house in DY, you're on 600 square meters, you got a three bedroom home. What do you do? Good old recent sales. Uh, so when you are comparing your property, particularly if you saw how fast the property market changed in the last 12 to 16 weeks, you want to look at what sold in the last four weeks around your home. Um, that's a super, super important figure. How old do the well, how old are the comps that you're looking at? Sort of four, four weeks. So I think you know when you, when you look at how violent the property market was over that sort of twelve week period, we were doing I think it was about three percent a month on property values. That was could be thirty to forty grand on a million dollar property. So uh, it was just moving so bloody quickly. Um, but, you know, ha having those last four weeks of comps, um, land size, like for, you know, if size is super important. Um, so, you know, for a house, you want to look at your land size and your floor plate size. For a unit, you want to look at your, your floor plate size and you want to, and um, aspect is another big one as well. That northern aspect always gets a little bit more money for a home in the backyard. Um, so you want to sort of do your... What I like, Michael, is the way that we do it as a profession um, and as an agency internally. So what we'll actually do is we'll, we'll have the um, three properties is always the best, you know, use one property for comparison, sure. Three properties, that is an absolute winner if you got if you could find three comparisons in the last four weeks, five weeks around your property. Then what I normally do is I map out the differences between the property that I'm appraising, that's what an owner would do, their property, and I would map out the other properties and the distinctions between them. And those distinctions, like I mentioned, land size, block, um, internal floor plate size, kitchens, bathrooms, how modern they are, orientation, aspect, level, People love a level block as opposed to a sloping block and you can price the stuff accordingly. The thing where I think, I think Michael, people may find it hard is when you're pricing, when there are those discrepancies or there are those differences between your home, what are they actually worth? Yeah, and I was just thinking that then. So I find the best way is you find a home. So map out your pros and cons, basically. And you've got to be honest with yourself. <laughs> your house is not going to be the best of everything. So there will be some things that another house 
is better. So first of all, you got to be honest. No one needs to see this. <laughs> so be honest. Then look look at the posit, look at the areas that a home above yours sold for, and see what was better. May have had a new kitchen, new bathroom, and then views. yeah, you use views, smaller block, and then look what that sold for compared to one that's a little bit inferior to yours. And that could be a hundred grand difference, or it could be five hundred grand difference. Once you've got that sort of difference in price, then you can sort of look through that list. And go, okay, a new kitchen and bathroom will achieve a hundred grand more. Because here's two examples of a home with old kitchen and bathrooms and new, and they're pretty consistently selling for a hundred grand more. So that really allows you to pinpoint. You, there's no magical equation of a new kitchen will 2x. You spend 10 grand, you sell it for 40 grand. A new bathroom is 1.5x. Spend 10 grand, add 15. Like there's no magical um, equation to do so. Now, Luke made a good point there. Um, what about the emotional buyer price, which is very, very, which is very key. So what I what I would almost say, if I was look looking um, to price up my home, and then there was, there was an auction down the street which went like 500K above the reserve. There were two buyers just bidding for it like crazy. I would almost take that sale out. It's called an anomaly, where if you got three sales at 1.5 and then one's at 2 million, yes, it shows that the market's strong and it's got the ability, because not all markets will have that ability. But I think for argument's sake and to be a conservative, I would take that out. Definitely keep it top of mind going, well, do I, does my property have the X factor that may go crazy at an auction? And that can be the difference in a selling strategy between private tree and auction, but that's not the conversation we're having today. To sort or, of or, bring, or bring the emotional sale in, in, in and it's going to balance out on your average anyway. So if you've got three or four comparisons and one of them's an emotional high price, you know, if you balance those out between the other three, it'll just bring it, it'll just bring up that average a little bit, but the average will still be the average. Um, I think that's important, but uh, with with your pricing of your place, I, I, I think what you said, Michael, is really good. You've got to be honest with yourself, and I think you can literally ask yourself the question, would I prefer, not just because it's your house, but would somebody prefer to live in that place that's sold or my place? All roads lead to Rome. Is that, is that the saying? Um It'll all, you know, you will, you will basically be able to, when you're looking at your three or four comparisons around you, you've just got to ask yourself that on a honest question and pick where you are compared to those places. That's always going to be good. Um, what else do you do to get, to get price in your own place? Yeah, and look at good sources of knowledge, especially in residential, is realestate.com, domain, you may be, um, but a lot of agents use a software system called RP Data. I believe it, it is quite an investment. So the average mum and dad may not look for it, but they may do a monthly trial. They may do stuff like that or ask an agent if you can get some information from that, like a suburb report that you can get that data. Because as we know, especially in, um, we're not seeing every sale go to realestate.com and domain. So making sure you have all the data and you're not missing sales um, is big is a big thing as well. Luke said, um, love the violent market. I thought size was everything. But Michael, I spent 300K on a reno. Yeah, that that's in a uh, comment too. There's no magical figure of return on investment for a renovation. <laughs> and then Luke said, are you conditioning your future sellers? But I think that was in relation to um, take out the anomaly sale, the high one. Um, but you definitely got to note it, but that's sometimes yeah. how, I, how I do it. Do you know, uh, a good one, um, when, if you've got an agent that you actually particularly get along with and you ask them to come and do an appraisal in your place, but you be really straight up and tell them you're not going to sell, the nice thing is, is once they, and make sure they're, they're a good long-term agent so you don't have to repeat this process all the time. But you get a good long-term agent, someone that you like, you get them through. The great thing is you're not going to have to get them through again. In a year or two or every year, you can just put a call in or every two years, you can just put the call in and say, hey, remember my place? Of course I do. What's it worth? Yeah. Quick phone call. 
And Mark, what's the benefit of owners knowing what the property is worth? Like, what are some benefits of why an owner should be on this? Why don't, like, for the owner who's out there who bought 20 years ago, I don't care. What, what's the advantages for me to know? Can I use the equity? Yeah, I, look, I, I think it's risk for reward. We work so hard all day, every day um, to slave away to pay that mortgage. I think it's nice, and that's kicking you up the ass every day, 365 days a year. I think every once in a while, it's nice to pay yourself on the back. So if you've, if you've gone through the hard work and paid the mortgage, it's nice to do the fun work and pat yourself on the back as well and say, yeah, yeah, this was, this was good and I'm glad. And just, just to position yourself, I think it's really, really important. It's a little bit like an athlete. You know, if you're consistently training and you're not timing your run, which is often a, you're doing better, um, how would you know? But when you time your run and you, you, you're running a better time and you've been training every day for 365 days, you're like, yes, I'm a legend. You know, I'm like pat on the back and it pushes you forward again. So I think knowing your property value does that. Yeah. And also there's huge benefits that you can leverage if you've got equity, which is the difference between what you owe on the property and what's it worth. You may... I, there was a stat that came out the other day that um, more parents are helping their children buy um, now than ever before. And Mel sent it to me. Let me have a quick look. It was, I think on average, your mum and dad are putting in $90,000 to help their children buy. So if, you, if you're wanting to help your kids buy, you need to know what your property is worth. Where is it? Or if you minus, if you minus what it's worth, ninety k average on average, parents are putting in ninety k to help their kids purchase their first property. Wow. This is the largest increase of parents contributing towards kids' deposits to buy. So you need to know. Wow. Um, what other tips out there? So, so uh, comparables. If you're just tuning in, we're talking about how you at home can work out what your property is worth, either to double check an agent's opinion, just to know without calling an agent. And so you have the tools to do it yourself. And as we said, it's key to find sales, especially in the residential market, within 12 weeks, any longer, any from being sold any longer, they can just, the market can change such so dramatically. That does vary from maybe rural properties or ones that are a little bit more unique. Um, but for your typical apartment, your typical house, and how you know it's typical is there are similar block size to many others. Um, like 3,000 square feet. Yes, Mark? Go to visit another open house. Yes, that's key. Go to open homes on a Saturday. It just go in. You don't have to be buying. You can just be snooping, lots of snooping, be straight up with the agent. Let me know when it sells for how much. Live in the local area, not selling. Um, and then, yeah, that's a really good one. It really gives you a good, and, and it gives you ideas for renovations. It gives you an idea how to capitalize on your value, how to make more money from a nice, doing something nice to your home, how to improve living in your home. You know, you'll do stuff and you go, wow, this is much, the livability here is so much better. It's a great idea. Yeah. And Luke, uh, the article, it was, I believe, on, uh, and Mojo sent me a photo of the news. I think it was on ABC News on Monday. So if you check, or maybe on Tuesday, Sunday. So check out ABC. The Chiron was financial help from parents could be driving up prices. Sam Kerr, Chelsea Boat progressed. No, that, yeah. So have a look on ABC and you should be able to find the article, the segment they had on parents helping. Um, but I, th I think that's a wrap, Mark. We're back on Zoom. We're back cross-posting. So it's a little different. We can't put people's comments on the bottom of the screen. We'd love your yeah. feedback if the visuals are cleaner and you like this better or it, no difference from the viewer's end because we're all about the viewer and your experience. Yep. And I think in summary, what, we, what, what people could learn out of today is how to know what your property is worth. Um, one, check out the recent sales, but make sure they're in the last, they're in the last um, four weeks. Two, Add and subtract from those recent sales where you fit in, in, in the picking order, uh, and that's where your price your price is going to is going to sit in. Three, um, what, what was the other one, Michael? There was go to, go to go open to homes, open houses, signboards in the local area, 
He's also very good. Realestate.com.au sold. Um, Realestate.com.au sold's got a really good mapping section. So if you type in your suburb and then you type in um, the order of most recent sale to less recent sale, it says list, grid, or map. Mm. Hit map and you can actually see around you um, what sold recently. That's really that's a really really cool tool because proximity is nice. You know, you, you three suburbs away, it's not a comparison, um, and they're great ways to write. And just ring an agent, just ring an agent, get them through. They don't mind, honestly, um, doing an appraisal if you're not considering selling that even that year. Um, get them round, but you know, build that relationship with a nice local agent, a, a, a long term local agent who's not going to be bailing on you in a year or two. How do you know that? We'll see if they've been around for a couple of years at least. Um, and then they, you can just call them every year, every two years. Hey, what do you reckon? What do you reckon? What do you reckon they can tell you? And even compare your notes with an agent. I know I do this a lot on development sites where I work with clients and we work the pricing out together. They educate me. Um, I educate them and we just all get better. So there's no reason you call an agent and go, hey, this is what I worked out. Let's compare notes so I know what it's worth. Um, build a good rapport, rapport with that agent as well. So, uh, because yeah. you, that's a good point, Michael. Because you've actually got stuff to add to the agent as well. So don't feel like it's a one-way street and it's unfair because you're ringing them yeah. for a price. Often you're telling them what's happening in the area, uh, what's happening in the local school, what's happening, who's building where, who's moved in, who's moved out. Often you're, uh, you know, what's sold even, often you're educating that agent on that as well. So it's a two-way street. Good point. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, Luke, you're going to wrap it up five minutes ago. Yeah. <laughs> All righty, it's done. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. See you, mate.